I wrote a piece this week. Um, we're talking as we speak. There's a, um, a House Energy and Commerce Committee hearing um, about uh, fanning the flames, misinformation, disinformation, and extremism in the media. And the reason this um, got a little bit of press attention is because a pair of uh, Democratic House members wrote a letter to uh, cable providers like Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, Cox, and Dish. And they asked them a series of questions. And the last question they asked was, are you planning to continue? Sorry, the two members are Anna Eshu and Jerry McNerney. Uh, and they, the last question they ask is, are you planning to continue carrying Fox News, Newsmax, and OANN? Uh, on UVerse, DirecTV, and AT&T TV, both now and beyond any contract renewal date? If so, why? Uh, and the reason that I that I I thought this was freaky, well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's always a little bit weird when members of the government are suggesting removing anybody, any, any kind of media outlet, um, or clamping down on them in any way. Uh, but you know, we, we went through a moment like this in 2017 when the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, invited a whole bunch of like Facebook, Google, Twitter, uh, and some other platforms to Washington and demanded that they come up with a plan to prevent the foment of discord. And nobody thought much of it at the time. But the request in conjunction with like the threat of increased regulation um, spurred a lot of these companies to start doing pretty aggressive uh, content moderation slash censorship. So the question I have for you before we talk about it, uh, this with our guest Shahid Buttar, uh, is do you, do, you, do you think this is concerning or censorship or uh, is it just... Is it just a weird thing that a couple of random members of the house are doing, and uh, is it something that should be we should be worried about at all? I'm gonna go with yes, worrisome, and worrisome in in a way that's extra annoying because it's worrisome in a way that a lot of our allies um, would disagree with us over or disagree with me over. Let's say a lot of my leftists allies are jumping on board with this and that's that's troubling to me yeah all the people who used to be fans of mine who would have would have uh, objected they're long gone already so right yeah. yeah that's the thing i still gotta fight i'm still i can still reach some people matt that's right that's right yeah <laughs> yeah no it, it it's it's very frustrating and we're going to talk about you, this with what happened to you <laughs> um, you know, we're going to talk in, in, in an interview with, with, with Shahid, but the the a lot of what's happened in the last, especially in the last year, is put it puts you in the position of having to take sides with people you really can't stand. You yeah, know? and um, I, you know, I don't, I don't think, I don't think you can argue that there's been misinformation on Fox, um, but. Like they don't a, a they don't have a monopoly on it. B they you know, there's often like confusion between misinformation and stuff that's just obnoxious, which right is, or offensive or racist. Or offensive, yeah, or, or racist, yeah, exactly. Uh, and which is uh, not dis dismissing those things as unimportant, but you deal with those things differently. Right, right, and it's it's this is just another like you know, uh, station on this highway that we're on that, um, you know, is abandoning the traditional way we think about this stuff, which is, yeah, like they suck, but, you know, and we sue them when we go over the line, but basically we we combat this by making better arguments. Increasingly, like the, the, the new approach is let's find a way to clamp down on them. And, there, and, and you know, there have been so many successful efforts at kind of deplatforming political opposition, dating back to to Alex Jones, to shutting down the the New York Post story, to locking Donald Trump's account, to 
um, shutting down QAnon to the shutting down discussions of the you know election conspiracies, you know. So uh, preceding this, we we saw all these calls in the in in the media from people like Brian Stelter and um, uh, Margaret Sullivan, uh, Max Boot saying, okay, well now let's turn our attention to to doing something about Fox, which is. Um, it's it's concerning, right? Because it you know we we could end up with this almost like a quasi official news agency, right. with, uh, you know, it, it, which they suggested. Remember the New York Times? They suggested that. Did they really? Yeah, there was a, a piece where they suggested. Well, now of course I'm reading from Fox because that's how it happens, right? right One side yeah. reports on the other, but. New York Times is turning to the Biden administration to help solve our reality crisis and calling on the new president to appoint a reality czar to combat disinformation. You didn't see this? Time techno Times technology columnist Kevin Roos. Mm, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. He, he mm -hmm. wrote about it. Like, that's an example of one of the problems. And, and, and I, I talked about this, is that we now have this, like, bifurcated media landscape where none of the other um, kind of blue leaning, leaning media outlets, they don't correct each other uh, the same way that conservative outlets don't correct each other. Uh, so if you get rid of Fox, OAN and Newsmax, who's going to tell you when there's a screw up in CNN or the New York Times, right? Like you're going to have the, you know, a regulatory mechanism basically gone, you know? Um, yeah. So it, I don't know. It's freaky to me. Like the, the, this whole this whole tendency to reach for like let's just ban you know the the other side. Uh, I don't. Know, it wigs me out, especially since when this first started a couple of years ago with Alex Jones, and everybody's like, "Oh, we can all agree that Alex Jones is terrible, and nobody's going to shed a tear that he's gone." Um, but you know, and then when you raise when you raise the question, well, is this eventually going to mean that they're going to go after other kinds of conservative media? People said, oh, well, no, that would never happen. We're here like two years later, right? Right. So um, I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I think it's a crazy story, uh, but it could happen, you know? I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not hard to envision at this point. It would only take a couple of companies to go along. Also, what do people think would happen for other sites? Like for with, with another president in power, let's say. Well, right. Like, let's say we establish that they're able to do this. You know, I mean, first of all, there, there is they're not going to allow any kind of, um, you know, leftist right uh, news organization to rise to any kind of prominence yeah. like the you know if, if they can do this to fox which is super capitalized right and funded yeah and has plenty of uh, political allies on the hill um you can bet that any anybody that has you know a, any kind of progressive leanings is not going to have the juice to to um to save themselves if they get in the crosshairs of something like this so we're it, it's yeah. what, they, what they're really looking for is like this kind of self-perpetuating, self-checking ecosystem yeah. of CNNs and Washington Posts and MSNBC, MSNBC New York MSNBC, Times, right? Um, so which very, would just be like a very it would be like a socially liberal, diversity um, promoting war machine right yeah exactly right i mean would they even rep this is the thing if you had that if you didn't have um you know smaller alternative media uh and you didn't have big conservative media like the next time we get into a fiasco like the wmd affair are we even gonna know you know like that right. didn't that it didn't work out is anyone right. ever going to follow up on that like that's 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 the thing that about this whole this whole content moderation uh movement that that wigs me out is yeah that, you know and, and people really don't get that like bad people can be right for the wrong reasons like yeah. if you know a right someone we hate may 
be willing to talk about something for reasons that we totally disagree with, or maybe because we have some overlap. Um, and that is just, it's like, a, I can't believe how stupid people are about this. Like, uh, do you, have you, you said in your piece that you wrote on Substack, um, and everyone check out my Substack piece coming soon, by the way. Oh yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. Uh, but you said uh, that you refuse to go on Fox News. Yeah, I've never gone on. You've never gone on, yeah. So would you go on? Yeah, now I would. Yeah, yeah. because now you're a right winger. Well, right, who, yeah, now I'm who, a right winger. Yeah, no, exactly, no, I yeah. mean, it's like the... You've been asked to go on in the past, right? I have, yeah. And, and you know, I, I, usually, I always politely decline because like the the business model of Fox, I just never really liked. Like right. I always, I always felt it was like a little bit, it was a little bit like a predatory lender. They, yeah. they were, they were freaking out their their audience and playing on that. And you know, but now basically everybody does that. You know, and um, and and if there are actually people who are going to try to go after this this network. Um, you know that that's really really scary it's yeah. it's it's a really bad situation um you know the, i mean I, I i was thinking about it as i, as I was writing like I, if if i had thought 10 years ago that i would eventually be writing a, a piece and in, in you know in defense of fox news like i, yeah. I, I probably would have jumped out a window but right. that's that's where we are now. glad you can read your future then glad you yeah, can exactly. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it just yeah i mean i i can't I always I'm always so annoyed by people saying that, like, you know, Tucker Carlson isn't anti war. He's not anti imperialist. It's like, yeah, I know that. Like if someone goes on his show to talk about Syria, someone who hates his politics on almost everything. It doesn't mean that, like, skepticism about Syria is bad and right wing. And it also doesn't mean that he is on this one issue progressive and anti-racist and woke it means that there are isolationists who oppose war for various reasons um some of them deeply offensive to me but okay so give me another outlet to talk about it on it just drives me crazy this it's such a stupid discussion sure and, and no it's strategy just, it's all so condemnation some people are politically that they, they have political motivations to tell you things that other news outlets will right mean, right so um you know, when when, when uh, Christopher Steele in in a in a lawsuit, you know, wrote the it, and it was in a British lawsuit. And he wrote something to the effect of, um, you know, he never expected his report to be public. It was raw and unverified. The, the intelligence, there were like all the all of the uh, outlets that had covered the P tape and all these other stories like they, they didn't cover that story. The only only place that story appeared in was in a couple of like small right wing outlets, you know, like the Washington Times. That um, doesn't mean that they're wrong. It just means that, you know, that maybe they only they're the ones they're, they're, they're right. the only ones who are motivated to cover that, right. you know, so that has value. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, it, it it's really freaky that people want this homogenous uh, news landscape 